Grigory Yakovlevich Perelman is a Russian mathematician who proved the Poincaré conjecture and who refused to accept the Fields Medal or the $1 million Clay Prize. He was born on 13th of June 1966 in St. Petersburg, Russia. His parents are Yakov Perelman, an electrical engineer, and Lyubov Livna, a former teacher of mathematics at a technical college. He is a Jewish family member. Grigory Yakovlevich, their first child, is often known by the name Grisha. In his childhood Grisha learned to play the violin, thanks to his mother and a private tutor. His father also had a major influence in developing his son's problem-solving skills. When he was 10 years old, he participated in district mathematics competitions. Grisha's mother was advised to send him to a mathematics club run by a 19-year-old coach named Sergei Rekshin. The club met twice a week at the Palace of Pioneers at the end of the school day and Rekshin, an undergraduate student at Leningrad University. Rukshin quickly saw Perelman's potential and Perelman became Rukshin's favorite pupil. In the summer of 1980 Rukshin tutored Perelman in English so that he could enter Leningrad's Special Mathematics and Physics School No. 239 in September of that year. Intensive lessons conducted walking round the parks of Leningrad successfully achieved their aim. Perelman excelled at the International Mathematical Olympiad Competition in Budapest in July. He got a gold medal and a special prize for achieving a perfect score. This gave Perelman automatic entry to university. Despite his remarkable performance as an undergraduate, he wasn't welcomed as a graduate student at the Leningrad branch of the Steklov Mathematics Institute. Under Ivan B. No. Bradoff's leadership the Steklov Mathematics Institute didn't look for Jews and, although it now had a new director, the old policies persisted. Alexander Danilovic Alexandrov wrote to the director requesting that Perelman be allowed to undertake graduate work under his supervision at the Leningrad branch of the Steklov Mathematics Institute. The request, highly unusual coming from someone of Alexandrov's high standing, was granted but, although Alexandrov would be his official advisor. In practice it was Yuri Pirago who took on the role. Perelman defended his thesis in 1990. After a stay at the Institute of Advanced Scientific Studies near Paris, Perelman came back to the Steklov Mathematics Institute in Leningrad. Then Perelman was invited to the United States to talk at the 1991 Geometry Festival at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. He lectured on the work which he had done on Alexandrov spaces with Pirago and Gromov. In 1992 Perelman was invited to spend the autumn semester at the Courant Institute, New York University, as a postdoctoral scholar. In 1993 he spent a semester at Stony Brook, a campus of the State University of New York, again funded by a fellowship. To get an idea of the problems that Perelman was beginning to think about around this time, let's make as simple as possible description of the Poincaré conjecture. If we stretch a rubber band around the surface of an apple, then we can shrink it down to a point by moving it slowly, without tearing it and without allowing it to leave the surface. On the other hand, if we imagine that the same rubber band has somehow been stretched in the appropriate direction around the donut, then there is no way of shrinking it to a point without breaking either the rubber band or the donut. We say the surface of the apple is simply connected, but that the surface of the donut is not. Poincaré, almost a hundred years ago, knew that a two-dimensional sphere is essentially characterized by this property of simple connectivity, and asked the corresponding question for the three-dimensional sphere. A possible way to solve the Poincaré conjecture had been developed by Richard Hamilton, who had introduced a key idea in 1982 when he began to study a particular equation he called the Ricci flow. When Perelman was going to lectures at the Institute for Advanced Study he attended a lecture there by Hamilton and talked with him after the lecture. When he was a Miller Fellow at Berkeley, 
Perelman attended some further lectures by Hamilton, and he began to understand why Hamilton could not make any further progress towards proving the Poincaré conjecture using the Ricci flow. While he was in the United States, Perelman received several academic job firms. He was offered a full professorship, without making any application, by Tel Aviv University in Israel. He decided to turn down all the offers and return to the St. Petersburg branch of the Steklov Mathematics Institute. Basically he was able to live on the savings he had made from the money he got in the United States, which was a good amount, since he had lived very frugally. He refused to accept a European Mathematical Society prize in 1996. Perelman had realized that Hamilton was making no progress with the Poincaré conjecture when he read a paper Hamilton published in 1995. He wrote to Hamilton, asking for a possible collaboration, since he had ideas on how to solve the problem. When he received no reply, it seems Perelman decided to do all the job himself. On the 11th of November 2002, Perelman put his paper The Entropy Formula for the Ricci Flow and its geometric applications on the web. Many experts realized that he had made the breakthrough necessary to solve the conjecture. He received invitations to visit the Stony Brook campus of the State University of New York and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He began making plans for the visits. In the meantime he posted a second paper Ricci flow with surgery on three manifolds on the web continuing his proof. He arrived in the United States in April 2003 and went first to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology where he gave talks on his work for most days and the two weeks he was there. He also spent two weeks at Stony Brook. He also visited Columbia University and Princeton University where he gave lectures. He turned down all offers of professorships that were made to him, becoming annoyed at the pressure some put on him to accept. He returned to St. Petersburg at the end of April 2002 and, in July, put finite extinction time for the solutions to the Ricci flow on certain three manifolds, the third part of his work, on the web. It took some time for experts in the field to convince themselves that Perelman had solved the Poincaré conjecture and a little longer to work through the details to see that he had also solved the first in geometrization conjecture. He continued working at the Steklov Mathematics Institute in St. Petersburg where he was promoted to senior researcher. However in December 2005 he resigned, saying that he was disappointed in mathematics and wanted to try something else. In August 2006 he was awarded a Fields Medal, due to his contributions to geometry and his revolutionary insights into the analytical and geometric structure of the Ricci flow. Perelman also refused the invitation to be a plenary speaker at the 2006 International Congress of Mathematicians. He also refused the award of the Fields Medal, the first person ever to do that. In March 2010 the Clay Mathematics Institute announced that Perelman met the requirements for the award of 1 million US dollars which they had offered for the solution of the Poincaré conjecture. In July 2010 Perelman refused to accept the million dollars, arguing that he didn't like their decision, which considered unfair, saying that the American mathematician Hamilton's also deserved credit 